Hi all, in this video, I'm going to share with you about chart, string, and DMA. DMA means dynamic memory allocations. Okay, for your information that um, we have two ways basically in uh, manipulating strings. Okay, the first one is using conventional style C string manipulations. You have to understand the C++. We are learning about C++, so C++ is derived from C itself. Before C++ comes, um, programmers already designed how to manipulate strings in the C. That's why it called it a C string. And when C++ have been, C programming have been improved and improved become C++, then we will use a C string, oh sorry, a string classes. Okay, so there are two ways. In order to understand what is a C string, of course, we will look for the chart character. And for your information that um, I always remind you that chart represents one character, a single character. But when we combine a set of characters, then well, we can refer to an array. And a combination of a um, number or, or group of characters means that uh, it is also a string. So basically C string also can be referred to an array of charts or in another name we call it as a string. Okay. All right. If you still remember that in the lecture, we have learned about how to declare a character and then how to give a variable, name for a variable, and then we can assign any chart, any single character for our variables because it is chart, just refer to one. And later we can see out our results for the particular variables that we have defined. And of course, if I compile and run, the results will give me F name, which is referred to here, and it is Y. Okay, but how about other um, other characters like this one or maybe a question mark all of these when we compile and run it will still display this um, character okay the character that we have defined and for your information that we also have some character which, which is very special character like backslash n this is means new line if we compile and run you will found that it is no error because new line is considered as um, one of the character Okay, besides new line, we have um, alert. You will hear the sound, ding, ding, ding. I'm not sure whether you heard that, but when I compile and run, you will find that the line, the output, the output will give you a sound, ding, ding, and if you realize the lines between here has been reduced compared to um, the previous example I show you with new line. Okay, and then the other one is backslash T where we cannot see from this context because uh, backslash t is referred to the tab. That is one tabs have been implemented here. And then another one where you have to remember this is what we call as null terminator. Null terminator. This is zero. Backslash zero is referring to null terminators. It is also categorized as one of the character, hidden character that we cannot see from any program. I repeat, we cannot see from any program. Let's say, let's say if my input is yes. Okay. I try, eh? you don't follow. Um, I just try to explain the character is exit. If we type Y E S, there are three characters here. This does not fulfill chart because chart only require one character, but we have three. However, it didn't show any mistake in this case. So when I compile and run, it will give you a result of S basically. It will show us S. Okay, so why this is happen? Because when um, compiler detect, try to detect what are the content over here, Actually, there is one hidden character that we can't see. It is not displayed, always never displayed to us. This character is called now terminator. So what will happen with the compiler is it will check from the left to the right for these words. It will find, okay, one, okay, two, all right, three. And then it will found that this is the terminator. So it will store the last character because chart only accept one character. So it will store this S on it. And what if what if we have an O? No. You will found that the output is O only. Okay, when we compile and run, it will give you O. Alright. And if you type C++, compile and run, it will give us a plus. Okay. But this, this is not the correct way how we use string using character, using chart. Because it is more than one character. Alright. In order to correct this mistake, we always change the single quote to double quote. So this will tell the compiler that actually I'm referring to more than one character. However, it will show that it is showing that there is an error over here. Okay, because this is more than one character. So more than one character, 
means that we have to refer to a string. But um, I'm talking about C string. So the basic concept is not about string, it's about array. Okay, when I add the square bracket, you will found that the web, the red web, or the warning, the errors have been removed automatically because we have defined this as an array. But I did not put any value inside here to define the size. Okay, I don't put because I know this is the content. And when we compile and run this, you will found that it will show C++. Okay, so basically each of these is referring to an index in uh, this character, sorry, in this array. So what will be happen if I try to see out one by one? Just to show you the difference. Um, okay, so now we see out zero, one, and two, the indexes, the content. You will found that it is C++. Okay, so that is the basic concept of um, array and chart. Okay, the other thing you have to remember is whatever you have defined in a character, in a, uh, an array of charts, okay, it will be defined as chart. So no matter you're using symbol or you are using number or you are using any capital letter or lowercase, all of these will be automatically assigned and stored as chart. Which is means if we want to... Um, change this to a number it is impossible but somehow uh, there is a function there is a function that we can use to change the content the the content to integers and then we can perform some arithmetic calculations for an example if i want to calculate um i want to do a simple calculations with this number okay this is my integer number but I have accidentally, either purposely or accidentally, I store this as chart array. So in order to use this and convert it, we have to use a function called atoy. Uh, so the syntax is I declare integer um, num equal to atoy, and then I refer to these uh, character variables. And now what will be happen is this chart array will be converted to an integer using function called atoy okay and now i can perform the arithmetic calculations uh, using this input okay let's say no. okay plus 10 and then i see out the results no all right so when i compile and run You found that my result is 25423, which is referring to integer. But if you do not convert, so what will happen? If I directly apply this, it does not work. Okay, it does not work. So please remember if you have captured some numbers, store it in the character, and then you must convert it to uh, integer, then only you can perform the allometric. Uh, operations next we will look at the library header file for c um, type the header file for c types we have few syntax the first one is two upper and two lower so two upper functions is used to convert the lower cast character to upper cast and two two lower means that we convert the upper cast characters to the lower cast um, but you have to remember that when we convert or, or using these functions, we, we are referring to the C string um, libraries, or sorry, C C type libraries, which is actually referred to the C string concepts. We are going to convert one by one. So we cannot run from a for loop or a while loop. Let's consider this example that I have called a C C type header file. And then I have defined that came on as my fname array, where this variable is defined as character. And in order to convert all of these words to the uppercase, uh, we have to call for uh, a for loop, okay, a for loop, and then we have to call for the functions to upper. So with this, the compiler will run one by one, convert from the index zero until the last of the size of my array. Okay, um, you will found that I'm using size of over here, which is referring to a functions, 
uh, that detect the size of this particular array for FNAM. Okay, this is a must. Otherwise, the compiler do not know um, the size of the particular array and it will not perform correctly okay, in the conversions. So the output will be uh, change everything to capital letter. Same case for to lower. When we want to use to lower, it will also convert character per character. Okay, so I um, define it U name and then the wordings are University Malaysia Sabah all in capital letters. And then when I want to convert using the to lower functions, I call for the for loop, start from the index zero up to the maximum size of this U name variable and then convert one by one. Okay, so uh, next, the compiler will convert all of the capital letter to the lower case. Okay, so next, um, I'm going to share with you another six functions that are commonly used, very commonly used in, manipul in manipulating strings in the C string concepts. The first one is str length, meaning that we are going to return the length of the string. Okay, the length of the uh, chart array, sorry, okay, the chart array, not string. And str copy, meaning that we are copy from this content, the source content to its destinations. And then we also can copy certain parts of the characters from one source to its destinations. And we have string concatenate, meaning that we are combining um, two string or true array of characters become uh, one array. And then we have uh, also string and concatenate, meaning that we can set how many characters we want to concatenate. The last one is the string compare. String compare, CMP is compare. We are going to compare two strings. Which one is larger, which one is smaller? Okay, we go one by one. We refer to the string length functions. Okay, I have uh, created a simple program where I have defined f name and then assigned the value came on inside. All right. So in order to know the length of this string uh, during my C out, I just call the function and then just assign it the array of the character. And the output will be very simple. It will show us the length of the string equal to 11. So if we calculate one by one, the compiler will return the value and then tell us the integer. Okay, tell us the length, the length of um, the, the array, the character array. Okay, next, string copy from the T, from the S to the T. S is the source, T is the destination. And I have defined it two characters over here. One is the source. Okay, I have the content, so I do not specify um, the size of the array and then I create a destination character where I want to copy from source to destination. So what should I do is I call for this string CPY and then just put the destination and source variables. Okay, so when we want to apply string copy, you have to make sure that the destination is having a sufficient buffer to put all of the information from the source. So over here, if we count one by one, we found that UMS, UMS, uh, University of Malaysia Sabah is having about 26 characters, including the um, spaces. So we have to make sure that uh, the destination is having at least 26 uh, buffer, okay, or, or um, 26 places for the particular uh, array. Okay, and when you compile and run, you will found that uh, this is the results. Okay, sources, University of Malaysia Sabah, and then the destination is University of Malaysia Sabah. We copy from one source to another source. Okay, however, when I compile and run using um, Visual Studio, I found that Visual Studio block for the testing part. Okay, it does not allow me to compile and run because it is not sure about the um, source and the destination size. So in order to solve this, I have um, checked the online sources. It found that in the Visual Studios, they have another function called string copy underscore s, which is having exactly similar function as the string copy. Okay, but but over here we have to define the size of the definitions. <clears throat> Although we already defined here in the declarations part, but Visual Studio do not accept it. Okay, it wants us to play safe. It will it, it want to make sure that the program the exe file will not crash. So it requires one more, um, one more component, which is the size of the destinations. All right. So you just have to type size of and then destination comma follow with the rest of the info. You will get the same results. So please remember for those who are using Visual Studio Compiler for your program, uh, you have to use string copy underscore s. Okay? 
but I tried online compiler for uh, I can't remember what online compiler was that. Um, but it works. Okay, it works with string copy without underscore s. And next we go for string and copy, where we have three variables inside. One is the destination, another one is the source, and then the last one is how many characters you want to copy. Okay, so I have here University Malaysia Sabah. I want to copy from my source to destinations. And I only want to copy first 10 characters. So what will be happen is if we copy U N I 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Oh, the words university will be copied from the source, which is from University Malaysia Sabah, and then it will copy to here destinations. Alright, so the number, the, the integer here represent how many words you want to copy. And it will always start from um, index zero from our source. Okay, so here is the result. And same case, when I run under Visual Studios, it require um, to add on string and cpy underscore s. We must use this underscore s. But it does not require the size Okay, it only require underscore s. This is the function under Visual Studio. Alright, and the result is still same. Okay, so when you compile and run in Visual Studios, please remember underscore s eh, to run it safe. And next, you will look for the string cat concatenate. Cat mean concatenate, combined. Okay, we have two sources here. One is um, variable source, university content, and then Another one is destination, which is referring to the Sabah and the space. Okay, so when we apply string cat, meaning that we are going to combine these two. Okay, source is university, destination is Sabah. So what will be happen? Uh, string concatenate. Okay, destinations will be having Sabah university, where the destinations here originally is Sabah. Source is university. So when we concatenate them together, the output for destination will be changed to Sabah University. All right. So please remember destinations, uh, the content of destinations will be locked first and then combined with the source. Okay. So same case when you run in the uh, Visual C++, uh, Visual Studio. Okay. Visual Studio, you must add on underscore S and then you have to define the size of Okay, so the output is still same. Oh yeah, and then you also have to include the size of the destination in the array. Okay, it is a must. Huh? If you do not put this one, when you compile and run, it does not work. If you give me a warning. Okay, another example. What if I only concatenate four? Okay, this previous example, I concatenate everything. I concatenate everything, but now I only want to concatenate certain content. So what will be happened? My source is university, and I only want to copy the first, uh, not copy. I want to combine the first four characters. So I will combine U N I V. Okay, to the destinations. So my output will be Sabah space, and then U N I V for my destination. So Sabah underscore uni. All right. And same case for Visual Studio, please add on underscore s. Okay, but the output is still same. All right. Next, we go for um, compare, uh, comparison, string compare. Okay, in this example, I have declared string one as apple, string two as banana. So we are going to compare which one is large, which one is small. Uh, so um, the concept is apple is here as string one, banana as string two. So when the compiler compare, it will compare start from the first index. Okay, it compare A and B. And then in this case, we found that A is smaller than B in the lexical graphic. So what will be happen is automatically the compiler know that uh, string one is less than string two. It will not perform the rest. Okay, it will compare the first index, uh, sorry, the index zero, compare A and B, it found the results, and then it will tell you immediately string one is less than string two. All right, so what if, what if the content are same? Let's say B and B, 
we compare between B and B, it will return a zero because they are the same. So it will return zero. And then it found that in this array, we have another um, characters. So it compared again, A and A, it found that it is zero as well. And then if we move next, it found N and N, it is zero as well. Then it moved next, it found L and A. So it found that L is larger than A, automatically it will stop over here and return L larger than A, which is string one larger than uh, string two. It will go to here. String one is greater than string two. It will not compare the rest. Okay, because if we look at this, L is larger than A, but E is smaller than N. And then the rest, I cannot compare. Okay, so the compiler will do is until here only. Compare L and A, then it will stop. It will not compare the rest. Okay, so the answer is string one is greater than string two, which is L larger than A. And next one, I reverse it, okay, where B, A, N are same, but now we compare A and L. <clears throat> we, know, we know that L is larger than A as well, okay, in this case. So string two is larger than string one, all right? So string one is less than string two, uh, it's correct. Uh, string, string one is less than string two or string two is larger than string one. All right, it's up to you how do you define, how, how you define here eh, on the results part. Okay, so we go for the last part, which is dynam dynamic memory allocations. So uh, I'm not sure whether you're wondering or not why we have to learn dynamic memory allocations. For your information that in some of the cases when we create a program, we do not know the size of the array. I repeat, we do not know the size of the array. So in order to do that, we in, in, in order to solve these problems, we cannot um, run from dynamic memory allocations. We must use it, uh, which means that we will use it whenever we need it, anytime. Okay, so we can ask the C++ runtime system to create a new space for the array whenever you need it, anytime. Even though your, complete, uh, your, your project is completed, your exe file is, is ready, and then you want to create another exe file to call the content of the exe file, then we can use dynamic memory allocations concept, okay? Where this array will be stored in the heap memory for temporarily. And the syntax involved is new if you want to create a dynamic memory. And after we have used the particular memory, we have to release it, okay? Release it so that the, um, the hardware, the computer will not be overloaded. Then we use delete. So this is an example, uh, very simple one. I defined it integer for this variable called size and then I request the input from the user enter the size of the array which is size then I declare the dynamic array new integer size so over here in this case we are telling the compiler that we are going to need a dynamic memory allocations pointer okay and the data type is integer with the size size declared by the user this will be stored in dynamic array variables okay or pointers and then enter the integers then i grab the integers grab the input enter first integer and the second integer and so on so all of these will be stored in dynamic array okay and then i can call the dynamic array anytime i need and then i see out the results okay and lastly after the program is completed i i, I know the results already or my task is done i must delete the dynamic array okay in this case uh, we have defined it array. We have defined it array. So we use this symbol, the square bracket, square bracket, and square bracket. In case if you just want a variable, single variables, then we don't need the square bracket. Okay, we do not need the square bracket. So this is the output. Uh, enter five, enter the size of the array, which is five, and then I enter five integers, and then I see out the results. Okay, this is how we um, use the uh, pointer as uh, dynamic memory allocations. Okay, so I hope um, it is clear. And let's try for this example. Uh, maybe you should pause five minutes and then try it, and we will discuss. Okay, I have assumed that um, I've assumed that you have tried. Okay, to figure out what are the errors. So let's tr let's look at this uh, one by one. Huh? The first one, we have a pointer integer, and then the pointer assigned value 5. We delete the pointer, which is wrong. 
Why? Because we do not tell the computer, the compiler, that this is referring to a dynamic uh, memory allocations pointer. Okay, this is not a temporary one, but we delete it. So this is wrong. Okay, and then in this case, we are doing the right thing. We define it, the pointer as new int. And then we assign the five to the pointer. But we make a mistake over here where we redeclare, where we redeclare the pointer as new int. Okay, so um, we never delete, but then we declare again. All right, and then the next one is we define the pointer with new int tent. This is array tent. Okay, and then we call for it and store a variable, and then we delete the pointer. But this is an array, so we have to include the square bracket okay in our in the delete operations and now we have p and q p is referring to array and then pointer q is referring to the p and then we delete the p we delete the q so what is the mistake here p is the array of the pointer all right so the same memory block was deleted twice same memory block was deleted twice delete the p delete the q Okay, what we should delete is the array. Alright, if we want to delete the P, we delete the array. And then the last one, uh, we have four assigned to the integer N, and then we assign the locations, uh, this one to pointer, and then the P pointed to five, we delete the P. Um, so we can only delete the memory blocks that are obtained from new. Okay, we never declare as new. This is normal pointer. This is not a temporary pointer using the dynamic memory allocations format. Okay, we do not create new, so we don't delete it. All right. So please remember, eh, these are the most common errors that always happen uh, during the uh, programming part. All right, that's all for this chapter. Thank you very much for watching this video.